these are not the important things, but these are things to consider when you're looking to rent your property. Um, you need mortgage consent. As a landlord, you need mortgage consent to rent your property, particularly, in fact, only if you are on a, re a resident mortgage. Landlord insurance, what is the best landlord insurance out there? And you need to consider that you will need that. Your normal buildings and contents insurance will not be sufficient. Condition of the property, is the property fit for let? Is the property ready to let? Does it need redecorating? Does any adaptations need to be done before you take it to market? Is it in the best um, condition that it can be so that you can expect for it to be returned in the same manner? And are any repairs required that may well be um, of danger to the tenant? You need to also think and um, consider what type of tenants are you actually looking for? And then here's a really, really good one that might knock a lot of you let only landlords. And I really don't mean no offense, but are you qualified to manage the tenancy? Or, or do you really need an agent? Because if you do not understand everything about everything to do with complexities of lettings, I strongly recommend that you do not take the risk of self-managing. I understand why many landlords do. Um, and I understand why many landlords have for years done so because they have never been caught foul or had an experience that has convinced them that they no longer need to. But please just bear in mind that there are over 100, 200 pieces of legislation that relate to the private rented sector. Um, and also how to identify a good agent. So if you are going to use an agent, or uh, to, to quite simply find your tenant, or more importantly, to manage your tenancy. How do you identify a good agent? Do you just go by how pretty their office looks, or do you go by how cheap they are, or what is it that you look at, um, and what is it that you look for? One of the things I would say to you is when you are looking to identify an agent, and a good agent, um, now more than ever, we can we can actually ask this question. So, in the situation of a crisis, crisis like a national pandemic, what would you do? Would your offices remain open? Would you um, be available during that time? Because my answer to you is absolutely yes, always. Where physically and humanly possible, we would always be available, or somebody would always be available to handle your queries. Because if we're managing tenancies, we just quite simply cannot switch off regardless of where we are sat. Um, also look at whether they are qualified to do what they need to do. Um, something called ROPA, which is the regulation of property agents, is coming into force in the next few years. It has been delayed due to COVID. But what that means is that the industry will be regulated and therefore we're all on an even playing field because every single one of us will need to be qualified for what we do. Just to let you know that that is not the case at the moment. And many agents out there have no qualifications whatsoever um, and right on the information that they hold in their head. Now, I've been ALA qualified since 2009. I've been in letting since 2007. Um, and 50% of our tenancy management departments are also um, ALA qualified with the other 50% looking to, to be so. So just look at what is a good agent. Don't always base things on price. Price is important, and I understand that in many ways. And sometimes though, what you need to look at is, um, can I afford not to? Because some of the fines and the penalties that are out there are so huge, just one fine could wipe you out. You could be operating for 20 years with no problems. One prosecution could wipe you out, wipe you out completely, just like the tenant fee ban nearly did to us agents. And then that brings me on to considering your expenses, considering consider how much it's going to cost you to um, rent out your property. So you are going to need a little bit of a pot to keep money in to carry out routine repairs, carry out bigger repairs like replacement boilers and so forth. Just bear those things in mind, guys. OK. Now on to the importance. Legal requirements. Now, these are so important, okay, because the top four items that I am going to talk to you about, um, basically, if you do not evidence that you have provided these to your tenants, when you get to the point of needing to serve that six months notice that I've talked to you about, you will not be able to. Well, you will be able to serve it, but when you get to court, it will 
and not be valid and you will not be able to obtain possession and you will have to reserve again. So every single property as of the 1st of April 2020 required a um, EPC rating of E or above. So every new tenancy that you create or every existing tenancy that you have in situ should now have an EPC rating of E or above. You must provide a gas certificate to the tenant prior to the start of tenancy and then again every 12 months thereafter. Electric certificates, this is a piece of legislation came into force on the 1st of June um, and in play from the 1st of July, which I want to talk to you about in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, deposit registration, you absolutely have to register your tenant's deposit within 30 days of receipt. You have to provide them with the prescribed information. You have to provide them with the deposit certificate or the deposit terms for the scheme that you're using. Failure to do so means that you cannot serve notice and there are also financial penalties as well. Deregulation Act, all of the above is documentation that is required. And I will um, I have a slide in um, in a moment that will show you the full details of what you need to provide. Now, make sure you use the correct tenancy agreement, a short, short old tenancy or a non-housing act agreement. A short, short old tenancy is the norm. It is for people whereby they have exclusive possession of the property. It is their main and principal home and they are an individual. So for most tenants, ASTs are applicable, but not for all. Um, so please, but again, bear that in mind. The Non-Housing Act agreements actually give you as landlords much more power um, and the tenants less security of tenure. Another thing that your property before you start the tenancy must be compliant with is the Home to Fitness and Habitation 2018, which means that you are able to evidence that the property was fit for habitation at the start of tenancy. And then you have further obligations that it is fit for habitation during the tenancy and that you have checked that that is the case. And then we have the Immigration Act of 2016. You must verify your tenant's right to reside within the property. 